Hello, Acron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match. I'm Chapter Fury 33, bringing you a match between Aragant and Jay Raccoon on Rooftop Showdown. Let's get started then. So, Aragant, sorry, Jay Raccoon is starting on the west side of the map. He is probably going to be going for Grekum, and Aragant on the east side of the map, more than likely going for Grekum as well. No, actually, Aragant's going for CISO. Okay, and Jay Raccoon is. Well, not yet decided. He'll figure it out shortly. So, Aragant is also just opening up. Oh, interestingly, getting a very quick QPRP, so it looks like he's probably going to go for quick Lancers. Though, or at least a quick Factory, because Lancers and ATCs both need Q Plasma to work. But early Q Plasma makes a bit more sense either for an ATC rush or just for early Lancers in general. Jericoon, on the other hand, is going for Grekum. Hasn't done anything out of the ordinary yet. Not sure if he's going to go, probably going to go for an early Q Plasma to get an early Octopod. We'll see after that what he does. And he's also just setting himself up. Paused. Nothing to there. And Jericoon is actually... Oh, Aragant's actually going down. He's expanding very rapidly. And his Marine Specialized Pair going right to the center of the map. Wow, Aragant is being extremely aggressive at claiming the map. This is unusual. I'm curious how this will pan out, though you don't see this happen very often, and I'm <laughs> curious to think it might be for a reason. Jericoon, on the other hand, is not being quite so aggressive. He's going straight for Aragon's base, and we'll very quickly see that something is up. He probably will actually run into the Special Ops and Marine pair as he does so. So, with that done, I guess it's just a matter of when they meet up and what will happen with the information that Jericoon now gets, or will soon possess at least. Jericoon did get an early Q-Plasma. He does have enough Q-Plasma. He could build an Octopod as soon as he wants to. Probably going to wait a little bit on that, and did Aragon? No, he did move ultimately to get an armory, and it looks like this armory probably used to just claim this north expansion. He might use it for a proxy for infantry, but my guess is that he's likely to just use it to build a marine, or maybe a marine or two, get an, someone up here, get someone down here, maybe get someone over here. But no, the Octo has spotted the Special Ops and Marine, and a fight is, well, finished in... Aragon's sort of favor, but his marine died, so he's unable to build an armory up here. He needs to take care of that. And Aragon, aware of what's going on, Jericoon also aware that something's moved out, but he's not aware that Aragon had gone over for the armory yet. He's only aware that Aragon had moved out. This is an important distinction because Aragon moving out is not necessarily anything unusual. He, as far as could be told, was going straight for Jericoon's base. So Jericoon probably just expects that Aragon retreated, and once he gets to Aragon's base, which is right now actually, then you'll see that something's up. And he'll probably look for a proxy armory from here. And Aragon continuing to build up, getting more RPs, but it hasn't... Well, actually, he hasn't been focusing at this point. Jericoon, now aware of what's going on, doesn't appear to be changing up anything he's doing yet, but he has jumped back a minute. We'll see what that's up to. Going back another minute, Aragon is... moving his Marine back, interesting. Keeping his Special Ops going forward, but moving his Marine back and not... Okay, no, he's just trying to play around. I'm trying to figure out what he's trying to do with that. The Octo is on its way, and it will soon find them. That Marine, I guess he's decided, is going to die, so doing what he can for that. Keeping the Special Ops in front, actually wise move, putting the Special Ops in front, because it has more health. There's 100 health to the Marine 70, so nicely done there. That saved that Octo, or saved that Special Ops from the Octo. Another Octo, however, is coming in from Jay Raccoon, and that will probably not hit them, so no big deal. Jay Raccoon is getting another... Well, he does have another RP. He's not actually focused that heavily on RPs. This is the one-minute mark in the game, though, so he's probably just been focusing more on micromanaging the Octos. Has jumped back to deal with this. Macroing in the past, but... Eh. But that will be something he will have to deal with. I guess that's, well, using his chrono energy for that purpose. So it happens. Ergot, on the other hand... Already had a lot of this set up, so I just need to spend too much Chrono Energy in order to make it work. And Jericoon also appears to be not spending too much Chrono Energy of his own. So not a big deal from the looks of it. See, Jericoon is going to be... Well, actually, not have to worry about a proxy either. Aragon appears to... Okay, Aragon just appears to be indecisive at this point. He's probably trying to figure out if there are Octos coming. And Jericoon keeps going back and forth on whether or not he's attacking with Octos. And Aragon, at this point... Looks like he's just moving out of the way, the middle of the map entirely, avoiding the Octos, and will just go for his proxy. J. Raccoon, on the other hand, is going to be setting in Octos directly to the base, and Octopod as well. There we go, there's that Octopod. 
Going south, actually. Oh, I see. He's going along the south and double-checking this expansion. And we'll be raiding this expansion inside of a couple minutes. So before the present comes along, or before this time goes to the present... No. Before... The... Well, this is the past, so... Never mind. I... I don't even know. Because the present's gone past this already. I don't know what I'm thinking. This is in the past. The present has gone by. But, regardless... Jerrican is attacking. He will be hitting within a couple minutes. That's the important thing. This Octopod will be coming in, dealing some damage. And a Reef coming up as well, so... Three minutes, 20, 3 to 30 in the game. Reefs are coming up for tech, so probably four minute mark. We'll see advanced structures getting researched. And Ergant, on the other hand, as a jerk in further in the future, seeing Ergant hasn't got much. And Ergant back about 30 seconds down from there, getting a factory up. And we will see what he's planning on doing with the Q Plasma. I'm guessing it is Lancers. He's got quite a lot of Q Plasma compared to Liquid Crystal, and Lancers would be the best option. Building three of those just to get rid of this Octopod probably would do the trick. Let's see what he's up to, though, and he actually has no reserves in reserve. Well, never mind, then. He's going to build nothing. Build mechs. He can build another importer if he wants to. But it looks like he's focused entirely on building infantry instead of anything else. And he does have a special ops and marine power. The one that went to the north to build the armory originally going down. And it looks like Aragon has lost his importer. That is going to be huge. He doesn't have any others on the map, so that is it. He cannot build any more units other than mechs at this point. Which is pretty terrible, given that there is an Octopod coming in. That's the second Oct or that's the same Octopod, sorry. The Octopod's coming in the north this time around, but... Jericoon has changed up that Octopod's orders, but... There is still an Octopod on the map. That will get rid of Aragon's infantry no matter what he does. There's pretty much no way around that. So, Aragon has a lot to worry about right now. He needs to save this armory. He is moving up to deal with it, and it looks like... Jericoon actually moved back. He's not bothering. He's... Dealing with the infantry that were further west, that were near his base, but Aragon's importer is actually okay for the time being. No Lancers have been built yet, I'm still a little bit surprised. And... Going still for infantry, entirely for, looks like, Special Ops. Just an entire line of Special Ops, and that... Well, I'm not sure why he's going for that. Getting advanced structures, though, and looks like from there he probably will lose his factory! The Octopod coming in, Jericoon about... A half minute up from there is, well, actually undoing that. He's just echoing around, just trying to see what's going on. He's not committing to any attacks yet. He just wants to know what Aragon is up to, and then from there he'll figure out what to do. But at this point, it looks like he's entirely de determined to make sure Aragon does not have any map control. It's Aragon, like I said, at the very start of the game, he was very aggressive going for it. Jericoon appears to be trying to make sure that Aragon really doesn't have it, and then... Likely at this point, wouldn't be surprised at this point, he decides just to go straight for Aragon's base and go for the kill. But it looks like, no, he's not going for an edge attack. He's building up advanced structures at about the five minute mark, not the four minute mark as I had originally thought. Probably going to get chronoporting as soon as he can, but we'll see. No, he's going for a Spire first. He's going to go for air units, not chronoporting. Aragon, on the other hand, having advanced structures, and he is getting Lancers and tanks. Okay, that's what he's getting advanced structures for, or advanced machinery. That's advanced structures and vehicles. Getting it for tanks. Not a bad idea. It's been generally considered that ATHCs are better for cost against air units, but tanks do last longer. Which does count for a fair amount when you consider that units that are dead do not deal damage. So, keeping that tank alive a bit longer means it is dealing a bit more damage over the course of his lifetime. And Lancer is encountering the Octo and Octopod and not actually doing a whole lot. It will take more than one Lancer to to do any real damage, and that Lancer is moving back wisely, Aragon getting it out of the way so that it doesn't die. Because like I said, dead units deal no damage. And there are no undead units in this game, so don't ask, because they don't exist, sorry. I mean, no, this isn't that kind of game. Granted, there are units you get of Echoes, that's the closest thing I suppose. Units that aren't actually there ultimately, but no, not that kind of game. Anyway, Jericoon appears to be going further in the, nearer to the present. He is going for a rather powerful attack, dealing a decent amount of damage to Jericoon's, sorry, Aragon's main base, getting rid of the importer, but this is two minutes up from where both players are, two and a half minutes up, rather, from where both of the players are focused. And Jericoon, he still finds Aragon has not really taken a lot of map control to the north. He, Aragon's completely focused on the south side of the map, not the north side of the map, and j Raccoon now checking the south side, now checking the exact expansion, and we'll find it with the Sepipod as well, and it looks like that is all he's building for Aragon as a Sepipod at this point. Has not built a Farapod. And at the same time, it looks like Aragon has encountered this tank here, and encountered 
So, Aragon and Jericho are attacking a bit sooner than it would have been anticipated, and this means that there is a little bit of distraction. Aragon's base is going to be around for a bit longer as a result, so... Aragon, not focused on this yet, he... Jumping back to the 714 mark, he has only one order's worth of Chrono Energy left. What will he use it on? I'm thinking probably move this tank further in to defend. But he hasn't used it yet. He's waiting for two orders. He's possibly at two orders now. No, not quite. He's used up... He What did he do? It's pretty big. He built a unit. He'll build a Tornado. That's actually a, a good choice. So with that Tornado, he will be able to better deal with... The Autobot roaming around the map and keeping him down a bit. Now, Jericoon hasn't really built much more, hasn't built anything more. Nothing has been built in the playable past, not at all focused on his macro management. Looks like he's probably saving money for chronoporting rather than using it on more units, which is a little risky at this point. Aragon is focused very heavily on getting units. He's. No, he's not setting up any money for chronoporting. He is going entirely for building units. Getting another tank, he's going to be able to easily get rid of this Octopod. Actually, right now, he could just move the Tornado over to the Octopod and get rid of it. Admittedly, the Sepipod could come in and act as a bit of fire support, but... Well, in that case, he could pull in the tank, and that's that's that. Aragon would win. Aragon moving his infantry forward instead, however, moving his special ops forward, and... Actually, the healing is doing a decent job keeping it alive, but it's only able to approach for two shots. That will do it in. And the other special ops able to approach in the meantime, getting a few more shots up, and... It Will it be able to kill it? It just barely kills it. One shot away from dying, but Aragon's Special Ops prevails against Jericoon's Octopod, getting rid of that Octopod roaming around the map, but I'm sure more Octopods will soon follow, and definitely Sepipods have followed. There we go. However, Jericoon is getting chronoporting at the 935 mark, or actually at the 843 mark. Sorry, we're at, we're at Jericoon's point of view. So he's just got chronoporting. Chronoporting back to Sepipod to help support these units, and it looks like that will completely change the course of this. This Octopod will be able to get rid of the Special Ops, will not die, and Jericoon saves his Octopod from certain death. It's so like I said, no zombies, but definitely ways for saving people from the dead. And looks like Aragon also getting Gate Tech of his own. However, he's going to have to spend another 100 Liquid Crystal and 100 Q Plasma in order to get the Chrono Porter to actually make use of that, and then spend another, I think, 30 seconds or so waiting for it to recharge. That is... Oh, boy. That's going to be a bit tricky for him. He is definitely on the back foot right now. Jericoon has an advantage on account of being Grekin, really. So this south base is basically... Well, we'll see if it's done for or not. It's hard to say because while damage has been dealt, it looks like... We are looking at Jericoon's point of view. It looks like Jericoon has prevailed. But Aragon didn't actually lose any units. Wait, really? I'm not sure that's right. That looks like the death counter just doesn't exist anymore. There, there should be, like flashing white or something for dying units, but just see, and it looks like no, Aragon has saved his base, and Jericoon did lose a unit. I guess the death counter just doesn't exist anymore. That's huh, that's unusual. I thought it did. Guess we got rid of it. Anyway, the point is, Aragon saves his south base with the Tornado. However, this Tornado will ultimately die, but the infant, the Marine saving it once again. So, Jericoon not quite able to get rid of that south base yet, but he is trying. He is working on it. Sending Octopods and probably will send them back in time. Uppercut with the Octopods to finish off this south base. Now, I should point out, Aragon doesn't just have the south base. He still has six, well, four LC and two QP RPs outside of here. This is, however, a third of his economy. So, losing this is a big loss, and he's just lost it. No, nope, there's the Corona port. Getting his Octopods back, and actually, possibly a bad idea... I mean, the Sepipod is going to come in and help out, so that Sepipod will s turn things around. The fact that the Tornado will not be able to survive long enough to kill it, but it does kill the Octopod, so the Octopod is dealing less damage than if they just stayed further in the future. Sepipod, however, finishing everything off, and that will basically be it. Aragon, does he have a Chrono Porter Gate yet? No, he doesn't even have a mech yet. That's bizarre. He Why doesn't he have a mech yet? He really needs that mech. Mechs are what build Corona Porters. I'm sure he gets one pretty soon. He just hasn't gotten around to it yet. That's my guess. Jaragoon has expanded to the north, by the way. He's expanded to the north. He's expanding to the northwest. Or expanded to the northwest. And hasn't really taken a southeast expansion. Or southwest expansion, rather. Focused very heavily on his main base. And actually out of resources on one of the on two of the crates. See the purple lines when he runs out of resources. Aragon, on the other hand, not running out of resources anywhere in his bases. He does, however, lose his expansion. Or... 
Wait. What? He... Yeah, he does lose this expansion. Earlier than... The green time of was what carrying the destruction of the expansion, so... Aragon's gonna have to deal with that. I think Aragon did get Chronoport... Okay, ultimately did get Chronoporting. This yellow bar does represent the Chronoport research. And there's that mech I was looking for. So he does get a mech. He is gonna get a Chronoporter pretty soon. Because I know he... I'm sure he... Well, I know he knows how to do Chronoporting. This shouldn't be a problem, but... He is, however, more importantly, going from the north and should be able to knock down this dome here, get rid of this expansion to the north, and Jerakun can Chronoport back to deal with this. Unfortunately, the Hierarchy Leader did get in front... Thankfully, did not for Aragon did not die, and Jerakun, there he is, there he's sending a Farabud back to deal with this, and there are special ops, there are special ops, there are cloak detectors, that Farabud does not have free reign. The special ops does allow the tanks to see it, once again range, and there it goes, that Farabud not having time to go back in time, Jerakun moving back, will pause right here to send this Farabud back in time, probably, actually, maybe not, there really isn't much point to, well there's a bit of point to Chronoport. If he chronoports, he will be able to fight alongside the dome, and that might help a little bit, but... No, this Farpod really doesn't have much of a chance. Jerakun may chronoport, but it's... Okay, these two Farpods, that'll help him. Now, on the other hand, Aragon should be going for a... There is a chronoport, there's another Macrofab, and he should probably go for frigates and Mar tanks at this point. Though these regular tanks are doing a great job, and like I said, despite not being as cost-effective as ATHCs for raw damage... None of these tanks died. Though admittedly, the, the Special Ops is at risk, and the Special Ops is about to go down, that Farpod about to get free reign, but no, the Special Ops stays alive. Just barely staying alive, but Jerakun can easily get in the way of that, and he needs more Special Ops. Actually, I'd say getting that Tornad, another Tornad, just as a backup for, or even ATHCs, just as a backup for detection. Heavy tanks being built up. Okay, Aragon going for heavy tanks. I have not seen heavy tanks used in a game in a very long time. I am glad to see them. They are wonderful anti-air units. They are probably the strongest anti-air unit in the game, or at least anti-air ground unit in the game. Possibly. I think Octoligos might actually beat them out, but they're still really strong. Octoligos are generally completely powerful units overall, but yeah, these guys, strongest anti-air unit that CISO has at any rate. Definitely one of the, definitely very tough as well, but not a detector. He needs ATHCs or Tornaz to deal with the detection and he does not have those. The special op not in range either, and it looks like he is not building more special ops. He does not have anything more coming up. Marines are coming up, but not special ops, and these far pods, however, are being detected by the special ops, but that's not enough. They should probably be chronoported back at this point, and Jerakun has actually chronoported some back, and has dealt with the heavy tanks from the looks of it further in the past. That... That's... That's the problem. He doesn't have a detection. The Farapods, it's the biggest strength of Farapods. Farapods used to be the game-winning move back in like, beta days. But still, they used to be the game-winning move because of the cloak. You could cloak them, get them behind your opponent, and chronoport them back down to the two-minute mark, and that would just win. Now, obviously, that's been balanced and changed, but still, there was a time when Farapods were the go-to unit. And that cloaking has not changed. They're still scary. You still need to have detectors around in order to deal with them. And Martanks are being built... I don't agree with the queuing, but Martanks are being built. I would recommend building more Macrofabs. He's got so much, so many resources. Get more Macrofabs and use them just to double time the production or triple time the production. Maybe more factories as well. This is not 0k. You cannot add build power to factories and just have one factory building everything. You need to build multiple factories if you want to make use of your resources. And the Farapods have come in. The Chronoport Farapods that Jericho had sent are coming into Aragon's base, and he does not have any detections to deal with it. The Martanks cannot hit air. And his tanks are gone. His heavy tanks have been destroyed further in the unplayable past. And Jerakun, just double checking further in the past, looks like he's chronoporting back to deal with this even harder. So double chronoporting, the, or re chronoporting rather, these Farapods. That is just cruel. So Aragon, I don't think he has much of a chance at this point. He is further in the future. I don't think he might try to move these heavy tanks back and chronoport them. Bad idea if he does. However, he is getting frigates and trying to chronoport them back from the looks of it, and that is a good idea because the frigates will not die. The Farapods have not started to hit the, far the Macrofab quite yet, especially since Aragon has changed his orders up, so the frigates have a bit of a chance, and they are moving back. One of them going back. However, once again, problem is that there is no detectors. The frigates can't do anything. The frigates are just going to stay here getting shot at, distracting the Farapods. That's all I can really do, unfortunately. And Aragon throws in the towel. That is game. Definitely shows the importance of cloaking and cloak detection, which actually hasn't come up all that much. The last game I saw with Farapods, they didn't cloak. So I hope you enjoyed that, 
and I will be back with another one shortly, so stay tuned.